Welcome to Service 49 and this is for the 27th of February 2022 and uh, today we're looking at the calming of the storm and the title of the sermon is Who is Jesus? But first we're going to have a song and as usual the chords and the lyrics can be found in the video description. You are called, you are called, you are called to belong to Jesus called. You are called, you are called to belong to Jesus Christ. You are loved and called by God to be his holy people based on who do you wrong. Bless all and never curse. You are called, you are called, you are called to belong to Jesus. Called, you are called, you are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Live in harmony with all and never be. When others do and mourn when others mourn You are called, you are called, you are called To belong to Jesus called You are called, you are called To belong to Jesus Christ Never repay anyone with evil You are called, you are called, you are called to belong to Jesus called, you are called, you are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Oh, and never take revenge, leave room for God's own fury if hunger stops you full. You are called, you are called, you are called to belong to Jesus called, you are called, you are called to belong to Jesus Christ. You should not be overcome by evil but through Christ our Lord appointed Son of God. And risen from the dead You are called You are called You are called To belong to Jesus Called You are called You are called To belong to Jesus Christ You are called You are called You are called Mark chapter 4, starting at verse 35. On the evening of that same day, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they left the crowd. The disciples got into the boat, which Jesus was already sitting in, and they took him with them. Other boats were there too. Suddenly a strong wind blew up, and the waves began to spill over into the boat so that it was about to fill with water. Jesus was in the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a pillow. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're about to die? 
Jesus stood up and commanded the wind, Be quiet! And he said to the waves, Be still! The wind died down and there was a great calm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? Still have you no faith? But they were terribly afraid and said to one another, Who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is Jesus? Let's look first at who his disciples asked that he was. They had seen many miraculous healings and even deliverances from the demonic. They had listened to much teaching. They saw how the crowds were drawn to him like no other. So they knew he was an extraordinary man. They followed him everywhere. They believed he walked with God, even though his teaching and behaviour was different from the other rabbis, that is, teachers. They trusted him and obeyed him without question. So when he said, let's go over to the other side, they did not hesitate. Then a huge storm erupted. There they were in the midst of a violent storm which threatened to overwhelm them and there was Jesus, asleep and undisturbed. Yet they knew instinctively that he could deal with any danger and could take care of them, even in the most imminent danger of drowning. So they woke him. It wasn't unusual for sudden storms to occur on the Lake of Galilee, but this one seems to have been particularly fierce. Why didn't he seem to care about their present danger of drowning? Was he aware of it? And what was he was happening? Was this a test of their loyalty and trust and their faith in him? What was his motive in crossing the lake? Did he know something they didn't? I believe he may have had a strong feeling of urgency at the very least because, in fact, what awaited him was a man suffering from multiple demon possession and driven away from all human contact. So was this storm deliberate opposition from Satan? Did Satan have that much power? Satan thinks he has and pushes against the boundaries that God has laid upon him as a result of his rebellion in heaven. In heaven. Did Jesus know the storm was coming? Did he go to sleep anyway, knowing that he could handle any danger? He was led by the Holy Spirit and obedient to the will of God the Father. He trusted God so fully that he knew that they would all be safe and that he, even as Son of Man, had ultimate power over all in the natural and spiritual realm. God never abandons his children. Wherever he leads us, he has a good reason and he will be glorified. So, when the disciples in their panic woke Jesus telling him they would all drown, Jesus took complete control as he always did. He said to the elements, quiet, be still. That was all it took for complete calm to happen immediately. Where did such authority come from? No wonder the disciples asked, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So who is Jesus? Where does his authority come from? They were not the first to ask this question. In Mark chapter 2 and verse 1 and following, when Jesus healed a paralysed man, he said, Son, your sins are forgiven. This horrified the teachers of the law, who accused him of blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Yet Jesus challenged them when he said, Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or get up and walk. Jesus 
Son of Man, as he refers to himself in Mark's Gospel, is Son of God. At the beginning of creation, he was present and active in the act of creation. Let's read John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 from the Living Bible. Before anything else existed, there was the Word with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Eternal life is in him, and this life give, gives light to all mankind. The Word is a reference to Jesus. So it says that he was with God and was God in the beginning of creation. He was part of the Godhead. He was the creator with the Father, not instructed after God's authority, but using his own authority in complete unity with the Father. In Genesis 1.26, God says, let us make mankind in our image in our likeness, the plural being God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now we'll look at Jesus' birth story. In Matthew chapter 1 verses 1 to 16, his human lineage is laid out, from Abraham the father of the nation, to Joseph and Mary, both in the line of descent, from King David, chosen of God. But that's not all. In verse 18, Mary was found to be pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in verse 20, Joseph was told in a dream to take Mary as his wife, as the child was indeed conceived under the power of the Holy Spirit. Throughout the Gospels, we have other examples of Jesus' deity. Apart from his many acts of healing and teaching, there is an awareness of Jesus' self-knowledge. Although he referred to himself as Son of Man, he knew he was also Son of God, as in the episode of forgiving the sins of the paralytic. As his ministry progressed, there is more evidence of his deity. Example, his transfiguration on the mountain and his discussion with Moses and Elijah in Mark chapter 9 verses 3 to 8. Also the voice from heaven saying, This is my son whom I love, listen to him. There was also his understanding of his coming suffering in crucifixion. He did not view this as a failure but the fulfilment of his purpose to redeem mankind. Three times he predicted his death, but he did not flinch. He deliberately set his face to Jerusalem, although his disciples were full of dread. Ultimately, at the Passover supper, before he was arrested, he took the bread, saying, This is my body, and of the wine he said, This is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many. And when he stood before Pilate, he did not try to defend himself in order to avoid death. He was in complete control. Finally, there was his resurrection appearances. When he came and went, each time reassuring his disciples, and explaining the scriptures concerning himself. Now we come to Thomas, who had not been present to see those appearances. He's known as Doubting Thomas, but this title overshadows his ultimate recognition of who Jesus is. He had said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. But then Jesus did come and challenged him to do just that. And Thomas declared, My Lord and my God. 
This is in John chapter 20, verses 24 to 28. This is the first declaration of certainty of belief. Certainty, not doubt. So the disciples went from, Who is this? to, My Lord and my God. I'm sure Thomas was expressing what they all knew in their hearts. In fact, during their time with him, they had gone from calling him teacher to Lord. A rabbi would be known as teacher, but never as Lord, which is the word used to refer to God, as we see from Thomas's response. Will you, with Thomas, believe that Jesus is Lord, Son of God and Son of Man? Will you address Jesus as my Lord and my God? Will you bow to him in worship? Now let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and evermore. Amen. In your presence we are waiting In your presence we are praying In your presence we are hoping To be touched by your word Hallelujah, 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 He is Lord. In our hearts, Lord, we are broken, in our hearts, Lord, Things unspoken in our hearts, Lord, just a token that's been touched by your word. Hallelujah, 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 he is Lord. In your church, Lord, we are praising. In your church, Lord, so amazing. In your church, Lord, we are raising up our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, he is Lord. He is risen, 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 he is risen. He is risen, 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 he 